Hi students, as a part of carbon nanotubes, today I am going to discuss with you about um, the applications or uses of the carbon nanotubes. So before going to watch this video, I would like to recommend you to watch the video which I have made on properties or characteristics of the carbon nanotubes because there will be a correlation between the properties or uh, characteristics with the applications or uses of uh, any of the substance whether it is a carbon nanotube or whatever the substance is definitely there is a correlation between the properties and the applications so in order to understand uh, the applications of uh, this particular carbon nanotube uh, i would like to recommend you to watch the video on the properties of carbon nanotubes uh, so the link of that particular video has been provided in the description please do watch that video right so before going to enter into this particular applications or uses of carbon nanotubes uh, first uh, i will uh, recap the structure of uh, the carbon nanotubes why i am uh, recapping the structure of uh, carbon nanotubes i will explain you you will come to know actually you will come to know right so actually the carbon nanotube comprises the graphene sheet so let us assume that this the graphene sheet is made up of hexagons so it is made up of hexagons 1 2 3 4 5 6 so it is filled with the hexagons right it is filled with the hexagons so this is the flat mono layer flat mono layer is nothing but the graphene sheet now in order to get the structure of carbon nanotubes what we need to do is we have to roll this graphene sheet we have to roll this graphene sheet and after rolling up this graphene sheet if we place the semi fullerene structure at the top of this graphene sheet and semi fullerene structure at the bottom of the graphene sheet then we will get the structure of a carbon nanotube carbon nanotube so this is a single walled carbon nanotube single walled carbon nanotube now in order to get the structure of uh, the multi walled carbon nanotube so multi walled carbon nanotube is resulted by the combination of so many single walled carbon nanotube that is rolling of uh, the graphene sheets so if the graphene sheets are rolled the graphene sheets are rolled then it results in the formation of uh, the multi walled carbon nanotubes so multi walled carbon nanotubes contains uh, so it is combination of uh, the combination of the graphene sheets so this is one graphene sheet this is the second graphene sheet this is the third graphene so this is the multi-walled carbon nanotube. So this is the multi-walled carbon nanotube. So why I have explained this? There is a reason behind the explaining the structure of uh, this particular carbon nanotube. Because my intention uh, of explaining the structure of the carbon nanotube is to make you aware of the fact that carbon nanotube is the derivative of the graphene derivative of the graphene right now already i have explained very clearly during the properties of uh, this particular carbon nanotubes that this particular carbon nanotube is hydrophobic in nature so what do you mean by hydrophobicity hydrophobicity means uh, Hating to dissolve in the water. Hating to dissolve in the water. So since uh, carbon nanotube is hydrophobic in nature, so it hates to dissolve in the water. It hates to dissolve in the water. Now, in order to demonstrate uh, how the carbon nanotube uh, will not dissolve in the water, I will take uh, one example. I am going to demonstrate you. But in this demonstration, I'm not going to take the carbon nanotube because carbon nanotube is very expensive. So I'm not going to take the carbon nanotube. Instead, I'm going to take the graphene. So because the graphene, the rolled graphene sheet is nothing but the carbon nanotube. Now, as the, as uh, 
the carbon nanotube is a rolled graphene sheet uh, the properties or characteristics of the carbon nanotubes will be more or less equal to the graphene so and graphene is available very easily so graphene is a part of the pencil the blackish portion of uh, the pencil is nothing but the graphene right now in this particular glass i have taken the graphene so you can observe the graphene here you can observe the graphene here so i have taken the graphene in this and uh, i am stirring this i am stirring this i am stirring this graphene i am stirring this graphene so if if i stir it for uh, 24 hours 48 hours or uh, more than uh, one week also this carbon uh, that is this particular graphene will not dissolve in the water because it is hydrophobic in nature purely hydrophobic in nature now as the carbon nanotube is the derivative of the graphene so definitely the carbon nanotube is also hydrophobic in nature that is it hates to dissolve in the water so you can uh, do you can perform this experiment at your, at your home just uh, take uh, uh, the graphene powder which is a part of the pencil and dissolve, try to dissolve in the water, it won't dissolve, it won't dissolve, it won't dissolve. So, stir it for 24 hours or 48 hours or more than, than, than that also. So, this will not dissolve in the water because it is a totally or absolutely hydrophobic in nature. Right? So, this is how I can demonstrate uh, how this particular graphene, which is nothing but the carbon nanotube, we can say that it is not uh, dissolving in the water. Right. So, since it is not dissolving in the water, we can say that uh, the carbon nanotube is uh, purely hydrophobic in nature. It hates to dissolve in the water. So, since it hates to dissolve in the water, this particular uh, carbon nanotube uh, is uh, waterproof. So, since it is waterproof, proof, uh, that is the reason this particular carbon nanotube uh, fabric is used for uh, manufacturing the waterproof cloths waterproof cloths nowadays uh, there are some brands there are uh, some uh, cloth brands or there so once they are bought once they are bought um, then there is no need to wash them at all because the copper nanotube fabric is uh, hydrophobic in nature since it is hydrophobic in nature it even will not absorb the sweat because sweat is the combination of the water and the, the soles so it will not absorb the sweat because it is purely hydrophobic in nature so whenever it is not absorbing the absorbing the whenever it is not absorbing the, the sweat so definitely that can be used longer without washing there is no need to wash also so some brands are there in the market now so once they are bought, then there is no wash, then there is no need of washing that particular cloth for more than years also. So such type of cloths are made up of carbon nanotube and this particular application is attributed to its hydrophobicity. Hydrophobicity and tear resistance fabrics. So this particular carbon nanotube uh, can be used for tear resistant fabrics because of its strength already I have explained that it is a uh, very strong in nature. So that is the reason we can uh, uh, design uh, the tear resistant fabrics making use of uh, carbon nanotubes. Right. Now already I have said that it is very strong. Why it is very strong? Uh, clearly explain in that previous video please do watch that video so since it is very strong this particular carbon nanotube can be used in the manufacturing of the sports equipment that is stronger and lighter tennis rackets that is for manufacturing the stronger and lighter tennis rackets bicycle parts etc this particular carbon nanotube can be used carbon nanotube can be used not only that because of its uh, greater strength because of it is its uh, greater strength it can be used uh, for uh, manufacturing the 
or making the suspension bridges making the suspension bridges so you in the suspension bridges uh, uh, the metal used is uh, the steel but here already have discussed in the first class of the carbon nanotubes that uh, because of its because of its uh, high angst modulus uh, it is uh, 100 times more stronger than uh, more stiffer than uh, the steel so that is the reason this particular carbon nanotube can be used for making the suspension bridges right suspension bridges examples of the suspension bridges are uh, golden gate bridge golden gate bridge which is uh, uh, located in san francisco and uh, george washington bridge which is present in the new jersey so such for uh, fun for uh, making the suspension bridges carbon nanotubes are being used are being used next because of its two properties the one is strength and the second one is Young's modulus. What is Young's modulus? It measures the it measures the stiffness of uh, it measures the stiffness of the solid material. So considering the Young's modulus, already I have discussed clearly that the Young's modulus of uh, this particular carbon nanotube is more than one terapascal, which is around. Uh, 10 power 12 pascals and coming to the multi-walled carbon nanotube its Young's modulus is around 1.8 terapascals means 1.8 into 10 power 12 pascals and its strength so considering these two properties the one is its strength and Young's modulus this particular Carbon nanotube can be used uh, for making the body armor. Body armor, body armor means uh, for manufacturing the bulletproof jackets. For manufacturing the bulletproof jackets. That is because of uh, the greater stiffness. Because of the greater stiffness of uh, this particular carbon nanotube. So once uh, the bullet uh, hits this uh, bulletproof jacket which is made up of uh, the carbon nanotube. Uh, because of this uh, greater stiffness of the carbon nanotube. Uh, the bullet will break into pieces. And uh, the energy of uh, that particular uh, broken parts of uh, the bullet uh, is being uh, reduced by the carbon nanotube material so that is the reason it can be used uh, as a body armor that is uh, for manufacturing the bulletproof jackets right i already have clearly explained that it is um, the good conductor of electricity so by assuming or uh, by considering the, the conductivity of uh, the carbon nanotubes, uh, it can be used for uh, manufacturing the conducting polymers, that is conducting polymers in the sense, it can be added to the conducting polymer in order to enhance, in order to enhance or uh, empower the conductivity of the conducting polymer because of its greater conductivity and it can be used uh, in the electrical component such as memory, a semiconductor components, transparent conducting films for touch screens, display and solar cells. Even it can be used for uh, making the ultra capacitors. Ultra capacitors. Right. So lastly, but not the least, it can be used for. Uh, it can be used as a drug uh, delivery vehicle, just like the fullerene. Why it can be used uh, as a drug delivery vehicle because of uh, so many cavities. So if you observe uh, the structure of uh, this particular carbon nanotube, uh, so this particular portion is the cavity portion, nothing is there in this. So since nothing is there in this particular cavity, we can uh, impregnate uh, the drug molecule, we can impregnate the drug molecule into the cavity and this particular carbon nanotube containing the drug molecule is administered into our body. So whenever it is administered into our body, it reaches, that is what this carbon nanotube will do, it will carry the 
drug molecule to the desired active site and drops the drug molecule at the desired active site. It is dropping means what? It is behaving like the vehicle for the drug molecule. So that is the reason uh, this particular copper nanotube acts as a drug delivery vehicle. So this is about uh, the applications or uses of uh, copper nanotubes. Once again, I am saying in order to understand uh, the applications or uses of the carbon nanotubes, please do watch the video which I have made on properties or characteristics of carbon nanotubes. The link of that particular video is uh, given in the description. Right? Then only you will understand this application so precisely. So thanks for watching this video.